Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. May your name be glorified, Jesus. We exalt you above every other name. May you take the stage as a minister. May I be blessed. May those who are watching be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you and welcome once again to my Revelation Hub. I'm the voice of Revelation, Pastor Gwendolyn APC Halley. And join me as we fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Our topic for meditation today is how to increase the, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. How to increase the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon your life. So that's very important. And our proof text is 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 2 verse 27 and I read, But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as he has taught you, you will abide in him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. Now, people of God, when we are talking about anointing, we are not only talking about servants of God, pastors, apostles, prophets, those who minister the gospel through singing as well, or through the word, or through acting, through comedy. We are talking about uh, also whatever calling of your life it is, whether you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, you're an engineer, you're a pilot, you are even if you own a small and medium-sized enterprise, even though even if you own a kiosk, whether it's a small-scale business or a huge-scale business, you need to grow in the anointing because you need the anointing of God to make money genuinely, to become a billionaire, to become a mogul, to become a tycoon, a business tycoon, a business mogul, to become a kingdom financier. So the first thing I like to say is that Jesus is the anointed. And in order for you and I to increase in anointing, we need to increase the way we meditate on the Word of God. Remember, this Bible is a documented Word of God. This is the Word of God is equivalent to Jesus Christ. So in order for you to have more of the anointing in you, you need to more of Jesus in you, you need to meditate on this day and night. Remember, meditation on it brings the Word alive in you. Through the Holy Spirit, it becomes more real. It becomes more alive. And you begin to fellowship with the Holy Ghost. And it's like I always said before, it's an experience that I cannot explain. You know, you, your life becomes to become tuned to the Holy Ghost. You begin to hear God's voice. You begin to see what God wants to show you concerning things, concerning your life, your environment, and, and what have you. So in order to increase your, point, uh, your anointing, point number one, you need to have the anointed Jesus Christ in your spirit, not in your head. I'm not talking about cramming scripture. That is a whole different thing. There's a difference between knowing about Jesus and knowing Jesus through the Holy Ghost. Remember, in my former teachings, I have said you cannot know Jesus until you have known the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives us the platform to see Jesus, to know Jesus, to hear Jesus, to fellowship with the Holy Ghost. That is a gift that everybody who is a disciple of Christ, a Christian or believer, must crave for, must, must have. Because if not, you may not make heaven. You may lose your salvation. You will make costly mistakes in your life. And that is not what God wants for his children. It's a free gift for everyone, not some particular people are supposed to be anointed. Now, the more you meditate on the Word of God, the more your fellowship with the Holy Ghost, the more you begin to have interaction and encounters with the Holy Ghost, and the more you begin to hear God, you begin to, that is what they call, you begin to move in the supernatural. You begin to move in different dimensions, different realms of the Spirit. And that is the beauty of being in Christ, people of God. That is the beauty of being anointed. And with that, anointing upon you. Remember, it was when uh, uh, Samuel poured the oil on David's head before his brothers and sisters that it preserved him. If not, King Saul would have killed him. So pray for it because the anointing also protects you. It also gives you direction. Hallelujah. The second uh, point on how to increase in the anointing of God is always be ready for encounters and impactation from God. Now, encounters can happen through your dreams, through your revelations. It can happen while you're fellowshipping in church. Uh, it can happen while you're in the presence of God all by yourself or while you're even watching TV or connecting to an anointed man of God. Why, when you go for a crusade or whatever, be always ready because you do not know the set time that God has programmed to impact you to increase your anointing, to move you from one realm to the other, to take you for just seeing door dimly uh, and to sharpen you, you know, 
and you know and particularly if in your dreams because god works with people in different ways god god works with uh, people differently the way god works with me is different from the way he'll work with you so if you know that god speaks to you or communicates with you through your dreams through your revelation then you should be more alert because that is the way that god has shown you he likes to communicate with you now in that i always advise people stay away from things that would actually blur your dreams or revelation of course you not to remember your dreams or your revelations uh that is alcohol Remember, I did a teaching on how alcohol will prevent you from being growing spiritually. It doesn't take you to hell, but you will keep being a baby Christian. Secondly, uh, also um, drugs. There are some medications you are taking that really, really disturbs you from actually remembering anything. Um, just also having a lot of uh, 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 unrest, strife in your spirit, conflict. It stops you from meditating. And that environment, it's not very conducive for the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you or reveal or to visit you or to impact you. And there, there are different ways that the Holy Ghost moves with everyone. You know, in my case, it's different. I have episodes where the Holy Spirit will take my spirit and take me to a land and, you know, I'll begin to do deliverance and healing on people, begin to preach and you know, it's, a, it's an experience, you know, that, that, that everyone should crave. If you're a businessman, businesswoman, uh, in whatever career, you will move from one level to another. You will, you will move from being, having an income of 100,000 francs CFA to 800,000 francs. And with grace you move, with grace you move. Hallelujah. That is how to increase in case you have to be ready to receive the anointing. Always be ready. Because a longing heart, a heart that is always prepared, that always comes closer to God, God will come closer to him. A heart that is always asking, fasting and praying, and asking God, visit me, encounter, I need encounters with you, always yearning for God. Remember uh, 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 the song that says, I sat here parted for the water so my soul longer that to thee. There's nobody who can long and test for Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ doesn't show up. Jesus Christ doesn't anoint them. Hallelujah. The third point is laying of hands by anointed servants of God. Servants of God carry different uh, levels of anointing. Okay, I want to say this. The, Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit was teaching me something. The body of Christ with all the servants of God whom you see in it carry different anointings in different dimensions and different graces. They are specialists in different graces. There's one who is good in deliverance from uh, generational curses. There's one who is good with deliverance from covenants. There's one who is delivered... Uh, who is um, uh, a specialist in deliverance from um, an evil dedication. There's one who is uh, for healing. There's one who is healing of broken bones. There's one who is healing of sores, of afflictions. There's one who is uh, good in deliverance from water spirits. There's one who is specialist in deliverance from uh, a spirit of the death. And the list is abundant. Now, there is no one servant of God, according to what I know, who is a specialist in more than two who has everything, or let me put it that way, who has every gift. He can manifest in the different dimensions of the gifts. Prophecy, healing, deliverance, and what have you. Uh, 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 the creative anointing, all of that. But he has one specialty. There are some people, men of, women of God, or ministers of God, who are specialists in fruit of the womb. They, that is what they carry. That is what God has given them. But that does not mean they can't do deliverance, they can't heal you. But it is not the same. That is why when God was teaching me about the anointing, he said, that is, I did it that way so that we can complement each other as pastors. Pastors can complement each other. And if you are under a certain grace or you are fellowship in a certain church or you are submitting in under a certain grace and you have a problem and you're being with your pastor or your mentor, your spiritual father, your spiritual mother for a year, two years, three years, and that problem has not changed. God, if God would direct you to the servant of God that carries the anointing to break that yoke, to take away that reproach, to deliver you, no matter how anointed you, the person is, or how your spiritual father or mother is. So when I see people who get so loyal to one person, like the person, a, a, a spiritual father or their mother or a pastor is their God, it's a problem. You can visit a man of God or a woman of God, go for your deliverance and go back to the commission that God has designed for you while on earth to usher you into your promised land. That does not mean your spiritual father or mother are not anointed or your spiritual leaders are not anointed, but they don't carry. They are not able to send the angel to carry out that deliverance. Now, let's go to the scripture. Look in the part when uh, uh, Daniel was praying. 
And it happened that his prayer was being delayed. Now, Angel Gabriel was bringing his answered prayer to him. The Prince of Pesha came and blocked him. Do you know that Angel Gabriel could not deliver, could not fight uh, Angel, uh, the, the Prince of Pesha, because he's not a warrior angel. It was Angel Michael. If you were Angel Michael, if Angel Michael came and joined him or was the one carrying the message, he would have destroyed the Prince of Pesha and the uh, Angel Gabriel would have delivered the message to Daniel. Now, what am, I, what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say that not every servant of God can send as the anointing, carries the grace to send an angel to deliver you, to break a yoke. Not all, you know, God, that everybody carries a speciality. That is why I always tell all my followers, all my Christians, if you are with me for one year, two years, three years, and your problem has not changed, pray to God, let God lead you to the servant of God that can send the angel to deliver you. And that is what my spiritual father, Prophet Jeremiah Omoto Fofin, tells us. If you are with me one year, two years, and your problem has not been resolved, go to whom can deliver you. Even if you're submitting under him, he tells you, and he tells every congregation, everybody, he says he's doing church service. Don't come here and keep and stay here looking for what I cannot send every angel. Yes, of course, you're anointed, but everybody has a speciality. Hallelujah. That is just what the Holy Spirit laid in my heart to share, and I'll continue. When you go to a, an, an anointed man of God, a woman of God, he will lay your hand on you, and you, they can transfer the anointing which you desire, or which God has asked them to transfer to you. Hallelujah. So that is another way, the third way to which you can increase in your anointing. Now, remember, do not underlook a servant of God, male or female, physically. The content of somebody does not, sometimes does not reflect their physicality. That is why you have to have an open mind and not hate people. Let gossip, let rumors, let things not pollute your mind because in as much as the servant of God is willing to transfer the anointing, because you already have, your spirit is polluted towards that person, that, that servant of God, you will not receive it. You will not increase in the anointing, even if they transfer it on you. Because remember, to receive genuinely from the uh, uh, servant of God is that you need to love the content and love the person. That is what makes the... the, 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 the the, 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 from, from the stomach, it comes from the from, from underneath to anoint you. Hallelujah. Now, number four is the motive of the motive and the contents of your heart. Now, what I'm going to say is what is the motive of why you are demanding the anointing from, of God? Or what is your motive of why you want to increase in the anointing of the Holy Ghost? And what is the content of your heart? The content of your heart is very important. Because sometimes the motive of people, of why they request for the anointing from God or from a spiritual parent or father or a mother is wrong. Now, let me tell you what happens. I would like to say this. It is God, Jesus, who anoints. And it's only Jesus who anoints. And I'll say this. A servant of God or a pastor or a minister of God may just love a son or daughter who is submitting under him or her and transfer the grace of anointing upon the person, pour oil on the person's head, speak prophetically into the person, and the person may, may fall up under the anointing and may get up. But because of the content of the person's heart, because of the motive of in the person's heart, which the spiritual parents or pastor may not have noticed, Jesus Christ will suspend the manifestation of that anointing. That means until the person's motive has changed and until the person or Jesus thinks is the best time or this is the time for me for this person to man manifest in this level he will allow the that anointing to begin to manifest upon that person there's also one thing that we ministers of God or we would have noticed when sometimes when a pastor or a minister of God has uh, genuinely loves a son or a daughter just because of what they do in front of all because they have been with them from the start of the ministry and they always anoint them always transfer grace upon them and reject the other ones or let me say don't put eye on the other ones that the other uh, sons and daughters that God has sent to them sometimes or uh, 
you find this son or daughter that hasn't that doesn't have the attention or doesn't have the father the spiritual father or the spiritual mother actually looking at them like with potential or looking at them to come up to nothing when this son or this daughter that has been uh, rejected or who has been kept aside by these spiritual parents begin to seek God and God anoints that person in a dream or the person has an encounter with God even while still in that same church uh, which he's uh, uh, submitting under and they begin to manifest in a different dimension of anointing that the spiritual parents are aware that they didn't transfer on that son or daughter they intentionally by human nature become cautious of that person sometimes out of jealousy out of envy out of whatever may be in their mind they stop giving uh, or they decide not to give that son or that daughter a platform to manifest the gifts people of god if it were only up to man many people many sons and daughters would not have gotten the impactation that they they needed to cross to their next level do we know that once you have a son or daughter under you and you notice that they are going through a particular challenge themselves and the anointing that is upon their life they are not able to fight their battles themselves or pray or break that yoke or be persistent that spiritual parent or spiritual father or mother is supposed to increase their grace it's supposed to impact them so that they be able to be able to be more spiritually alert be able to have their voice will become terror and they'll be able to overcome that battle even while the Holy Spirit is training them while they are submitted under that commission. Many parents, spiritual parents, do not do that. Do not do that. That is why I have to say that we as Christians, whether you're a pastor or not, should look unto God to be anointed. Jesus will anoint you if you ask him because he said, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. And if you keep knocking, he will receive. You will receive. If you keep asking, if you keep knocking, the door will open unto you. If you keep asking, you will receive. And if you keep seeking him, you will find. So people of God, focus on Jesus. And even if you're under a pastor or a minister who sometimes has his or her own weaknesses, look unto Jesus or what is in that person that you can receive. Remember, that person is human. It's not perfect. There are many people, pastors, who have been rejected from ministries or under some commissions because the gift or the impactation that God has put on them while the fellowship with God in the secret place becomes an annoyance or becomes an intimidation to the overseer of that ministry or to the spiritual father and mother in that ministry. So people of God, this is what I have for you today. And I pray that in whatever dimension you are moving in life, um, please look unto Jesus. You can be under a minister of God who is not rich, but he may carry the anointing to make you a billionaire do not look at the cover of the person look at the content